You are now watching a Fili Fuego production. Gracias, amigos. Fly, Eagles, fly. What is good? What is going on? And what is cracking? I am Philly Foothills, and I am back in the nest out west where I'm trying to bring you the best when it comes to Philadelphia Eagles content. Philbillies, there is a lot of finger pointing going on in the organization, the front office, and it's just getting very, very annoying. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I came across an article a couple days ago. Before I get into the article, for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome into the Nest Out West. Again, I go by Philly Foothills. If you like what you're seeing, go ahead and give me a thumbs up down below. And if you want more of it, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. And if you want notifications of when my videos are posted, go ahead and ding that bell. So, yeah, let's get into it. Um, Tim McManus of ESPN a couple days ago came out with an article uh, talking about how we're moving on from uh, the uh, our offensive uh, uh, our senior offensive assistant Rich Scagarello and Marty 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 Morningwig who was a senior offensive consultant. <laughs> so to those guys, I say deuces because they didn't do shit to get this offense rolling, to utilize our weapons, to put Carson Wentz in a better position to win, to put Jalen Hurts in a better position to win, even. I mean... <sighs> so, yeah, they, they both have expiring contracts, and they will not be returning to the Philadelphia Eagles coaching staff. Um... In regards to the offense this year, we also had, you know, Press Taylor, who is the passing game coordinator, and Andrew uh, Briner, who is the passing game analyst. Both of those guys, you know, you know, I've been hearing some rumors about about them about the Eagles possibly promoting Press Taylor to offensive coordinator, which I think would be an absolute disaster. Press Taylor's not even qualified to be a quarterback coach in my mind. He is uh, inexperienced and doesn't... doesn't speak to the players like a, like a coach needs to. He, he, he doesn't... Uh, it, it's... From what I've seen of Press Taylor, it's almost like he thinks he's above... Above the players, and, and that's not the way you could coach. You can't coach like that. Um, I mean, the, 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 this offensive coaching staff led Carson Wentz to, you know, tied for first in the league with 15 interceptions, and and that was only through 12 games, and I believe he was sacked 50 times. So I know some of that was his fault holding on to the ball too long, but a lot of it wasn't. A lot of it was the offensive line just letting guys right through, and he had guys right in his face immediately. And it hurts experienced the same thing, especially uh, against the Arizona Cardinals. And he got sacked six times in that game, and the offensive line was very leaky. But, uh, I mean... And again, you know, the, the numbers speak for themselves. We have to get some new coaching, offensive coaching in, into this building. We know that, obviously we know that there's going to be a new defensive coordinator uh, with Jim Schwartz deciding uh, not to coach next year. So, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, we were, like I said, it's, the numbers speak for themselves. We were 26th, 26th in scoring at 20.9, that 20.9, not 29 20.9 points per game. We were ranked 26th in the league and uh, even worse in passing yards per game at uh, just a 
below 208, so it's 207.9 passing yards per game, which had us ranked 28th. So that means there was only, what, five more teams that were better than us or worse than us in passing yards per game, and that's pretty sad. Uh, you know, there was a... <coughs> Pardon me. There was also also a quote from Doug Peterson in this article by Tim McManus of ESPN. And I quote, there's a lot of positives that come out of those communications. And he, unquote. Before I, I'll start the quote over again. He's talking about gathering game plans with, you know, all four of the, the, the gentlemen that I listed earlier. Rick. Uh, Scangarello, Marty Morningwig, Press Taylor, and Andrew Briner. I'm going to start the quote over again. Doug Peterson says, quote, There's a lot of positives that come out of those communications and those talks, those ideas. Really, everyone has great ideas. That's part of putting plans together. But at the end of the day, I want to make sure there's one voice, and that's my voice, that's heard offensively and no one, nobody else's. End quote. Now, to me, you're never going to win with coaching like that. Because to me, that, that, that tells me that he's not fully ready to relinquish play calling next year. And that's going to that's gonna take away from some of the people on the, po on the possible list of offensive coordinators because most guys are going to want to call the plays. They're going to want full access to the play calling on game day. So, I just don't, I don't agree with Doug Peterson's, I don't agree with that quote at all, and, you know, I tend to agree more with Mel Kuyper when he was arguing with uh, Marcus Spears about, you know, whether they should keep Carson Wentz or trade him. I'm obviously more on the keep him, we've already invested a lot of money in him, and let's see if we can get him right. And get him back to the 2017 Carson Wentz. Or at least close to it. So let me know what you think about all this in the comments. I greatly appreciate it. Um, I am 96 strong Phil Billies now. So I only need four more to reach my January goal of 100 subscribers. So if you are new to my channel, like I said, again, if you like what you're hearing, you like this video... Go ahead and give me a thumbs up down below and smash that subscribe button. And if you want notifications of when my videos are posted, go ahead and ding that bell. So, Phil Billies, like always, fly goes fly. And until next time, stay mean, stay green, and thanks for viewing me on your screen. Peace!